people are no longer designating whether they're male or female, right? But for the purpose of this conversation, we're going to talk about the designations women and men. And particularly, we're going to focus today on women and why is it important? What's different about women that we even bother to have a month for women? Any ideas? Administration. What happened? We take care of everybody. Okay. So we menstruate, menses. We're, what would you call? But don't men take care of people too? Oh, what I thought. Nurturers by spirit. Nurture by spirit. Okay, so they are saying nurturing by nature. But and now we say that when we talk about the yin and the yang, we say that men and women both have male and female in them. Because did you know that genetically, women have an X and a Y. And men have Ys. Men do not have an X. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's a good question. Why? So genetically, women do carry many of we, let's call them traits associated with masculinity, masculine traits, you know? Mm. And, uh, and I'm only using that loosely because nobody should be in a box, you know? You're not in a box, but we're using these terms loosely because one of the things we've done for too long is put people in a box. You should be soft. Uh, give me some things that we talk about women before I go into this. So, menses, nurturing, what else? Childbearing. Childbearing, children, right? What else? Do you think they'll ever have it where men can have first? Most no definitely. Way. No Most way. definitely. <laughs> no. You think? Why? Because all you need is a cavity, right? All you need is a cavity and a pouch because no now we do C-sections. The question is, will there ever be a time when men can deliver? No. no. I don't think so. No. Yeah, I'll carry it, yes, yes, make a little pocket. No, no we weren't genetic made. No. And you just open it up and pop it out. <laughs> One second, I'm can't hear the question. No, I said, no, that was a female. That was a female that 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 that, that had the uh, she had she had uh, she was born she was female gender, right when she was a female that carried that baby but she had she had to make herself up to look like a man took the breast off and everything okay. she was a female so so we're talking about male female now so we just said the genetic level now then what we spend a lot of time on is on the cervix. As human beings, for some reason, we spend a lot of time surface dwelling, right? So she looks like a man. He looks like a woman. He has he act like a girl. Right. Or she act like a man. Yeah. Oh, you know? And we give these superficial designations. Artificial, yes. And then you get <laughs> thrown off when a man says, what you do with that <laughs> <laughs> Or you get thrown off when oh, I know where you're going. Wow. And you get thrown off because you created these boxes for people. And because you have them in the box and they step out the box, you get confused. So keep that in the back of your mind when you want to put someone in a box. But today we're really focusing on the month of women, and there's certain things that we're going to have to know to do to be healthy as women. Or even if you choose to do a transsexual change, you still now, if you adopt that sexual identity, there are certain things you're going to have to do to keep healthy, and vice versa. But let's talk, what else do we say about women? You're, you're taking jobs that men usually um, like a job for men, like a pilot. Pilot. So there's some, they've been for a long time, um, what we say, occupational designations, right? She mentioned like pilots. Has anyone seen a female pilot? Yes. yes. Astronaut? Yes. Mae Jameson, right? So we're blowing this out the water, right? 
the mm -hmm. occupation, teachers. Remember when teachers were men? Mm -hmm. Men, and then they went to predominantly women. And depending what culture you're in, now you'll see Coach. men and Coaching. women. Coaches. Coaches. Yeah. Coaches. Yes. Coaches and, yes. And remember the announcers for football and basketball used yeah. to only be men. 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 Now you see females. And now we're seeing women. Mm -hmm. What do you think's happening? Change. <laughs> Why do you think it's we're changing? What did we find out? We're not in the box. <laughs> we was number one all of the time. Uh, no. Really? Really? Yes. Yes, no. that's true. Yes. You're getting away from creation. No. You're the trying to adapt to something that wasn't created for you. The something that we're now paying more attention to, other than the surface, is the brain. And we've come to understand that the brain can do anything, yeah. regardless of the gender. Mm -hmm. The brain, you train the brain, and if you train it to dance, it'll dance. So we have men do ballet, and we have women going to the moon. Mm -hmm. Training the brain, designing. Last night I watched a program, um, Top Designer, and there was a, um, actually half the group were men. Yeah. And some of the top designers of fashion and clothing yeah. were men. Mm. And I was very, very impressed by a young man who was born with a deformity of his hands and he designed only with one hand. Wow. He sewed, he stitched, he did everything with one hand. Mm. But he was in a field, technically, supposed to be fashion and design. But a lot of our designers are men. And I'm having this conversation with you because for two folds. One, if you are a man, you can help a woman take care of her health. And if you're a woman, you can help a man take care of his health, but you should also help your sisters take care of their health. And that's my, since we're focusing on women this month, I want us to really focus on health and what we as women can do to help each other. So let's go back. Menstrual is one of the defining. Um, during menses, in order to menstruate, you have to have a uterus. Right. Once the uterus is gone, not yeah. only do you no longer menstruate, but your hormones change. Yes. Hot flashes. Yes. You know, what other things happen? Does anyone know what happens? Sweating a lot. Irritability. Irritability can happen. Menopause. Mm -hmm. Menopause. There's a male pause. But it one, is? Yes, yeah. yes. The, I mean, we call it the diminishing the estrogen. So you can remove the uterus and have symptoms from the loss of the uterus, but also as you stop menstruating, the hormone estrogen also goes down, which creates many of the symptoms that some women have hot flashes, night sweats, mm. um, maybe mood swings, um, irritability, um, insomnia. Um, there are a lot of things that we've never talked about. We just go through the change in life, right? Yeah, what about tiredness? Tiredness, fatigue. And it's important that part of your health is that don't just suffer through those things. Talk about it. We can talk with each other and come up with solutions and address it with your healthcare provider because there's actually help for it. There's natural herbs that are available, there's specific diets. Um, we found that the more you exercise and engage in physical fitness, it improves your symptoms. Another thing we never talk about is vaginal dryness. A lot of women, as the estrogen level starts to go down, the vaginal dryness begins, which makes having intercourse very uncomfortable. And so it's like, I don't feel like it, you know? It's not just that you don't feel like it, that's very real also because with the diminishing estrogen, your sex drive can also be affected. And we're doing sex one-on-one -on -one again next month in April. But as that estrogen starts to diminish, vaginal dryness and that area being very dry, can make you very sensitive that you want to touch you. Don't be touching me, <laughs> you know, because it's too uncomfortable, you know. 
And for this treatment, besides lubricants, there are also um, um, vaginal hormones that you can get. But the thing that we don't talk about also, as women, incontinence. Anybody heard anybody have incontinence? You know what I mean when I say incontinence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Control You're not controlling your bladder. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Childbearing, we talk about childbearing. I'm one. It's a thing that we as women don't talk about, but sometimes after having children, you know, you push through that watermelon and then it affects your bladder. It, it drops the uterus and it affects also the bladder because it's a sandwich. I call it the sandwich. In the middle is the uterus. On top is the bladder. And in the back is the rectum, the sandwich. So this uterus, which is in the middle, you ever have a sandwich and you're eating all the meat starts to push out? Okay, and then the, the, then the top bread and the bottom bread start meeting. In many ways, when some women give um, children, especially the big size, the mega babies, you know, they cause the entire womb to drop, you know? And that's one of the things that affect women, and many women are suffering and are not saying anything about it. And that's a conversation because you can actually treat what we call the prolapse uterus, where the uterus has started to come down, and it feels like something's between your legs all the time, or you're getting urine you're starting to have you know leakage what they call leakage mm -hmm. it has to do with the uterus falling but it also has to do with hormones changing as your estrogen starts to drop did you guys know that that the estrogen mm. also affects your bladder i didn't know that yes. what it, was, but I it can that. affect your bladder so you start getting a little mm. bit of leakage Coughing. Anybody ever cough and you lose a little bit? All of a sudden you cough and it's like, what's going on here? Sneeze. You know? Or remember when you used to be able to drink a gallon of water and hold it? Yes. I can't do it anymore. I'm not, I'm not going to the bathroom until I get to my house. Right, forget that. I don't care about wipes now. Wipe that toy seat because I got to go. As you, I'm menopausal. I'm, I'm going to be 57 in September, and I went through menopause at 47. Mm -hmm. And is there any particular age for menopause? No. Menopause? No. no. 35, 38, 39. 40, 45. I was 47. And now it's like cough, sneeze, whoop. <laughs> that bathroom go fast, you know? Because if you don't, you know, you'll be like, dang, what's my underwear? You know? And now they got these. I don't know what they, who designs these things? Man. <laughs> <laughs> who said that? <laughs> I need to talk to whoever's out there listening. I need to have a conversation with the designers. Uh. <laughs> because they, they've created these undergarments yeah, that, that are, one, not cute. They're not cute, no. okay? And they distort my clothes, yeah. you know? Make you look like you got a fat pack, yeah. you know? Wow. I mean, maybe you want one, but you know? <laughs> no. It was bad enough wearing the brick when you're menstruating. No, Remember yes. the big bricks no, God, yeah. of pads? Yes. Until Lord. women got involved Hated in the design them. and said, Hated them. Yeah. light and thin, yeah. <laughs> which is what women wanted, something thin and light. But before, they were like bricks between your legs. Um, uh, I know they were designed by men, because they've been a woman, you know. <laughs> That's true. Because if you had to wear a brick, you would fix that design oh quick. Oh, my goodness. So now we're having this bladder loss, you know, and now we've got these big old, you know, super duper gigantic diapers, you know, that are messing up the design of the clothes. Mm -hmm. So whoever's out there, we need to work out the design. Call me, you know, because... No do something about that. So bladder loss is not uncommon. Coughs, but there's treatment for it. So for the bladder, you can see a urologist. And for women, they have one that's called a gyno-urologist. Really? Yes. Not just the urologist, there's actually specialists that work with the uterus and the bladder.
called gynaeurologists. They specialize in, in both. And it's really important because if you're having issues with the uterus coming down and leakage, they are specially trained to work with both of them. I'm the one we never talk about, losing stool. Because again, same thing, those gigantic babies, you know, if you've ever delivered one, can also cause the stool to also um, um, be loose, okay? Mm. So these are things that you're not talking about with your doctors, but as women, I want you to start having those conversations. I want you to talk about the menopause of hot flashes at night, not sleeping, because you don't sleep. What do you think sleep, not getting enough sleep does to you? Drive you mad. Sleep? <laughs> Drive you mad, you go crazy. Sleep is meant to restore, restore and repair. That's the time for the body to restore and repair. And if you're waking up every three to four hours, who, who changed my clothes? <laughs> you know, wiping down or heading to the bathroom because your bladder is not holding. You wake up and you're crabby patty and yeah. you wonder why she's so crabby. You know, all of a sudden the moods are changing because you haven't gotten enough sleep. Do you know? If you someone's talking about your behavior lately, get some sleep. First thing, first treatment, eat and sleep. Because if you're starving yourself, that's another problem. That will make you crappy. But not getting enough sleep will affect your health and your mood. So speak to your primary care about that because those are one of the things. Nutrition-wise, what do you think you need as a woman as you get older? What are the kind of things that nutritionally you should have more of? Uh, more sex? <laughs> she said more sex. No. Alcohol. 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 <laughs> I heard that alcohol. Does alcohol help you to sleep? No. No. How no. many people are using alcohol for sleep? Uh oh. No. Does it help? No. And you still, right? On the second glass, third glass of wine, and you still up. <laughs> right. So you may be prescribed to help you get that sleep you need um, medication. Yeah, melatonin. melatonin. There's stuff like melatonin, which is over the counter. Yeah. Let me give you a note on melatonin. Come on. I haven't taken it yet. Melatonin is not a sleeping pill. What is it? Melatonin is an herbal supplement that is meant to help you relax so that you can move into sleep. Okay? So don't think you're going to pop a melatonin and five minutes later you're going to be asleep. Especially if your brain is on fire. Okay? So I hear people go, it don't work, it don't work, that's not my child, the melatonin, it don't work. Well, your brain on fire. Oh, so you take something like a melatonin which is over the counter but you got to shut that stuff down you know you got to write your little notebook put your stuff aside for the day take a warm bath get the lavender going turn off the tv start reading the dictionary backward you know, <laughs> you know? Hmm. So do something to slow the brain down so you can relax and then the melatonin will help okay or there's also prescription medication. Now, careful, I'm going to go back to over-counter. Lots of Tylenol PM, Aleve PM. Do you know what's in the PM? What is that sleeping component in those? Diaper Iderman. Benadryl. Oh, really? It's Benadryl. Diphenylhydramine. It's Benadryl. And it's important that you know that if you're taking something to help you sleep, and it's saying sleep aid, check if it's diphenylhydramine or Benadryl mm -hmm. because Benadryl is used as what we call the antihistamine. So if your sinuses are running and draining and you're, you know, but the problem and the side effects with Benadryl, it makes people sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's why you shouldn't take that's a Benadryl and go drive your car, <laughs> oh. okay? You find yourself, you know, falling asleep. Benadryl should be taking at night or when you're not going anywhere if you have allergies. Mm -hmm. But for sleep, they attach it to a pain medication because one of the reasons a lot of people 
don't sleep because they're in pain. Neck, back, shoulder, hip pain. So you add a Benadryl and it'll help you to sleep. But know that you're taking a antihistamine, something for um, sinuses. And the side effect is sleep, which is why people use it for a sleeping aid, right? But there are also prescriptions for it. So just know that Benadryl. Now back to the alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> alcohol, you know, is actually has many responses in, in people. And as you get older, um, it's really important, especially women, the ratio for women, they said one drink, mm, one is the recommendation, like one glass of red wine, it's supposed to be cardio protective, one. Now, if you find you're doing two, three, and four a day, okay, you're above the recommendation for women. I don't know. Okay? I mean, just if you are. And if you're trying to use it for sleep, it may, really what alcohol may do is relax. And again, if your brain is on fire, you can drink a whole bottle of wine and you're still not going to sleep. Okay? Yes. Is that the, the code for alcohol? Yes, this is the code for alcohol, PTOH. Yes. What do they say a lot of people like take a nip so they can relax and dance? A lot of people, you know, when they, you can tell, it's like, boy, what's wrong with them? Well, they had a nip. And so it does, does alcohol just, when you say relax, yeah. Is that the form of? Okay. Yeah, that's a relaxing. Yeah. You do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> do whatever you like. It's called the mellow. <laughs> you know? The mellow, yeah. 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 It makes you feel good. You know? It, it really relaxes you. It does, the word that they utilize is called inhibitions. Mm -hmm. So if you're one of them tight people, <laughs> screw face people, wow. it loosens you up. Kind of loosen you up a little bit. All right. All right, they go now. Okay, so if you kind of tight fisted, you may want to get a little glass yourself, you know, so, you know, but. It does. It's called, it reduces your inhibition and it relaxes you, but it's not a sleep aid. Okay, you might want to fight too. So, because if some tight people just hold them back to fight, you know, and you wow. give them a little alcohol and they're ready to go. You know, so you gotta know who you are. You gotta know who you are. Don't drop the inhibition if you're a fighter. You know, you may need that inhibition. Okay, just to keep you from getting into trouble. Okay, and. It also inhibits the mouth. I'm just giving you warning. Drunks don't Everything tell no lies. you would never have said. <laughs> Drunks don't tell no lies. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. I never like your ass. <laughs> You'll always be in my business. Yeah. 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 That's why we need inhibitions. There are reasons why we have doors in places. Okay. Okay, I call it the door. <laughs> yes, things may go through your mind, but they don't need to come out your mouth. Yeah. Right? There's a time and place for everything. Everything under the sun. And you must choose the time. And under the wine is not the time. <laughs> okay? Under the wine is not the time. It doesn't smell sense. Okay, right? So, as women, so they're telling us one glass, okay? That's a recommendation for women for health, right? If you're going to drink. You know, I'm not saying to drink, but if you do drink, try and limit it to one glass for health purposes. And this, we talked about the bladder and the changes. Other things that women need to exchange about each other. What are the things? Family. Sometimes you have little family situations. Family. Do men get into family stuff? No. Yes. Avoid, avoid, avoid. No. Avoid, no, avoid? No, no, no. Okay. See? So as women, they avoid it. what are we doing? Why do women, and I'm just being really generic here, why do women have the so-called tendency to be in the Kool-Aid in the family? 
Argumental. Argumental, getting involved. Why is that? I always want to get involved, yeah. Nosy? Is it nosy? What else? No, no. attention. Huh? They're trying to keep peace. Really? Yes. Yes. Part of this um, the, our traditional here caregiver. Yeah. Women, because of childbearing and child rearing, or even if you don't have children, the designee and the designated role. Even if you never have children, growing up, many traditionalists have have uh, trained women from childhood to care for one another, yeah. care for the brother, care for the sister, care for the cousin, care for the auntie, and that caring often looks like getting my business. You know, it's often your. What's going on with her? What's happening? You know, and jumping into things. And the source comes very early from training as caregivers. Uh, of course, they're the malicious one. I'm not talking about the malicious one. No. You know, I'm talking about you just want good for people. So you, what's going on here? What's going on there? Yes. I think that women are concerners of spirit, and I think that a lot of times, uh, I'm not saying men are not, but they are more uh, unifocused, and we as women are more. Multifocus. So we would see something that a man would not discern, and we would ask that person, especially if it's in our family or in our circle of concern and love, we would, uh, you know, try to find out the source and try to. We always want to solve a problem. And we say, <coughs> so, so what? Do, what do you think? What do you think? I think it's in another direction, but she hits good points. Tell me, tell me, you're mad. We, I, we love it. We love it. Give us some feedback. I think we we mostly like tend to want to fix stuff or either be more of a worker to mm -hmm. to supply and protect. Uh -huh. so, Not really quick to solve. Okay. Mm. Solve. So fix and protect. And provide. Provide. And provide. Right. That's basically our key point. Uh oh. She got her coffee. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> So pro describe for me, uh, give an example. So the statement was, you know, men process things a little differently. It, more emotional. So women? We not argumental more. Women more we more, you know, women more emotional, men not. Argumentative? Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. argumentative? Yeah. <coughs> so, now, it's interesting, these terms, right? Isn't this interesting, right? Yes. Have you ever seen two men arguing? Yes. 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 About yes. who's going to win the game? Yes. Now, you know he ain't got no talent. <laughs> they keep giving him the ball, and that you know he should be the quarterback. Only no, doing no, no, game no. time, yes. Only do game times, right? <laughs> yes. I think it's the same. We just do it in different areas. Different areas. And that goes back yeah. to the brain. Different and, areas. Okay. Men are extremely emotional, but yeah. so are women. Yeah. But guess what happened? <laughs> they hide what it. What happened they to men? Yeah, They've been shamed. Good. They've no, been shamed no, to no. not show it. Don't say, don't say, no, we taught to. <laughs> Y'all taught to hold it in. Training. What you crying for, boy? <laughs> what you crying for? Yes. Suck it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that, yeah. Because two people yeah. crying not going to fix the problem. That's that's one. So one's got to be more abil have ability to go forward and fix the problem. It sounds like the women. No, no, <laughs> that, that's the point. <laughs> women want to be argumentative. They want to do things that not pertaining to not them all, not doing all it. women. Okay, we put up with, we put up for our husbands for many things, many reasons. We keep our mouth closed. Mm -hmm. That's not a good thing. I did okay. that for thirty five years. Am okay. I any better? Could no, be. Still it, have it. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I mean. It's my turn. It's her turn. She's all right. Go for it, girlfriend. Go for it. Go for it. Give her a chance. Give her a platform. Go ahead. So what I'm what I'm saying is that we want to do everyone. We want to make everyone happy. Yes. And especially if you're married, you know, make him happy. Do this. Have do that. And you know, in a, in a way, you lose part of yourself. Yep. Yeah. So the caregiving. And I, I think we, I think as we're doing Women's Month, please invite some men to come to the forum because I definitely think we could have a really good forum. Forum, another word for conversation. Yeah. Because 
For a long time, our training has kept men and women in the separation that we don't have those conversations that can be helpful. And training, we're training a new generation that actually talks that men do cry, that men yes. share their emotions. That's not good. That's not good. And, <laughs> that's good. That's good. and we're trained, we're, but we also have a generation of women who don't cry. No. And hold things in, and don't express. I, I feel like how you, how I feel, I feel like I could be wrong, but I feel like the uh, taking away the ability for men to be able to express and release those toxins, which that's what it turns into. It turns into aggression. It turns into anger. It turns into, I'm going to step on everybody cause so I can feel like a man. It turns into something else. So I feel like if they're able to let go of that, we can move forward. They can be better people in general and understand what women be trying to say forever. Oh, man. All right, guys. So it sounds to me like we need to have a whole talk on... Dr. MC Powell, we're going to talk about <laughs> the men and the women and these emotions. Because, and we're not going to solve this, and it's not even meant to be solved. And this is the thing I want you to, to get here that I'm teaching today. I'm all about health. And to deny a part of yourself is not healthy. Amen. When we deny a part of ourselves, and so it's important, and I started it with, yes, we put people in boxes, men, women, and then we created the box and said, you behave like this, and you behave mm -hmm. like this. And we forget that what we have in common is that we all have a brain, mm -hmm. and that brain creates, it creates. Now, are there roles? And guess what? You get to choose. Yes, I want to be very feminine. I like being girly. I like my bling. I like my earrings. Or you say, no, I ain't mean for that. I put on my cap and my baseball cap. And you get to express yeah, yourself you the way you want to express yeah. yourself. Now, to the degree, and my things, health is personal. But to the degree that what you choose to do affects another individual in a negative manner is unhealthy. So when I hear people say, well, I'm just going to do this because I want to do it, that's unhealthy. Classic example I gave one, if you're driving down the street, you're behind somebody, this ever happened to you? And they stop their car, mm -hmm. just stop. Mm -hmm. Because maybe a friend was, you know, they see a friend yeah. And they just stop in the middle of the road. They're now meeting a personal desire of their own. I want to talk to my friend. But they've now affected the entire traffic. That's the difference between taking care of yourself and being selfish. Because now you're no longer considering the ramifications to other people because you made a decision to do something. Okay? It's okay to take care of yourself and express yourself any way that you desire, but always remember that you're not to harm other people mm -hmm. in your choices. Yes? There's one symbol that we, uh, that we deal with when we're talking about men and talking about expectations, and that deals with color. Color? Clothing color. Men wear pink. Mm -hmm. uh, that's gone with that now. Men wear pink now. It's not good though. Yeah. Hey, you're gonna be my guest, my first guest on the show. What? <laughs> we talking about relationship or we talking about individual? Both. Both. Because we live together, so we're gonna talk about the individual. Because the example, according to the, the reason, the way you make the example, it make a different when you talk about individual as an individual person doing what they need to do and where a, a, a relationship combined, well, you have to think about each other. Right, and guess what? We always think about other people, but not just in relationship, because even though you don't know the person in the other car, right. you're in the relationship of the road, that you both are trying to get somewhere alive. 
and should you decide because I want to go from the first lane to the fourth lane because that's where I need to be, that's what I want to do, you no longer just dealing with what you want, you're creating an environment that can be dangerous to other people. That's what I'm okay. talking about. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, you draw a conclusion, yeah. Yeah, to, to, so it's okay. Between. Yeah, it's okay to have a personal desire, but always remember in seeking and addressing your personal desire, there are consequences to everything, you know? And do you want the consequence? Mm. I would especially think about in marriage that it's an excellent attitude to have for marriage because, you know, one feel like they want to do this, other one says, well, I, I, I've been doing this all my life. Well, come on, it's, it's affecting the relationship. So I think if we learn that when people are entering into a relationship and marriage, that more marriages probably last longer because you're pleasing each other. It's not me and mine, it's our Right. So, so we're gonna have, we're gonna we kind of come back to this, and um, um, Frank, please put that on our podcast. We're gonna start <laughs> opening podcasts for men and women and, and relationships. Yes. I want to get back to women as we're talking about Women's Month, and I'm so happy that we do have a man in the house because um, it gives a perspective that can be very helpful. So we talked about training our training and one of the things that I started when I started working with everyone here if you remember way back last year is one word that I'm going to leave you with and it's called choice uh -oh. choice uh -oh. one of the things that and your example was perfect one of the things that many women often feel that they don't have is choice. Mm -hmm. And so. Attention, Joseph, you are needed in a holiday storage. Joseph, please report to the holiday storage. Because I, I, as a physician of over 30 years, there's a word that many of my female patients say to me constantly I have to. Mm. I have. How many times, as a woman, you've used the word I have to? I have to. That's strange. That's strange. Have you ever? I must. <laughs> Who else? I have to cook dinner. I have to pick up the kids. I have to. I have to. The younger, the younger, the younger generation don't do it. My daughter said, I remember what you used to do when, you know, when I was little. One day we, I came home from work. Just came in the door. My husband said, "What's for dinner?" My daughter, who is five years old, went over and touched him again. Daddy, can't you cook for yourself? Ooh. And she's had that attitude forever. So if she wants to do something, she does it. Nobody tells her what to do, especially when it comes to men. Wow. I have That's the problem. Praise the Lord for that. That's That's the problem. Praise the Lord for that. She's right. It's 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 a it's you know the problem when you always it's be on top. Like you never understand what people under you talking about. And try and simplify your job. Or you can go on and on. Go get, you know, something made or prepare ahead for the week and help you. But design Work smart. is priority. We were designed, a male and a female were designed to be different, and priority is still it's in effect because of the creator. So why would you get away from that? Okay. That would call more confusion in a relationship. But what I'm saying, if you're home before this woman that's still at work, and you get home first, can't you boil some water to put some spaghetti before she gets home? Or you just want to sit there until she gets home. But that's not the point. That is the point. Woman not your, your wife is not your mama. No, she's not the woman, but... I'm like, just saying, you, to take you care get of you. into an agreement your wife is when you get companion. married and you know your place. <laughs> you, the, you. you should have been yeah, ready. I mean, married. that's what you designed when you were created. No, I'm, I'm just right. saying, yes, quote unquote, I'm just right. saying, quote unquote. I mean, according to the wife. I'm just talking about that. I'm just talking about that. 
I just Everybody can hear my voice. Clap your hands once. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. I'm leaving. No, 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 no,